Councilmember okay. Clayton. Here. Councilmember Kendall. Here. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Here. Mayor Moore. Here. We are on to proclamations. We have a we are proclaiming November 6, 2019, as social social justice day. Whereas the cur the core courage foundation's mission is to create civil discourse about important social justice issues for the six months running up to the election and whereas voters need to balance the campaign rhetoric with thoughtful consideration of social issues that need to be addressed and understood as a community and whereas the foundation is committed to hosting a social justice arts event every year on the Wednesday after election day, and whereas the call for arts asks for entries on a variety of subjects, allows everyone in the community to get involved, creates an opportunity for coordinating curriculum, and is an opportunity for students to participate at every level and in every medium, and Whereas this is the second year for their social justice art event, and whereas the Create Core Courage event, the Power of Art will be hosted at the House of Independence on November 6. There will be art and conversation about issues that concern every community. Art against racism, visual and performance art, art and gun violence, visual and performance art, children's rights, visual art, disability rights, film, earth justice, the photography, modern day slavery, poetry, queer rights, performance art, veterans rights, visual, visual arts, water justice, visual arts, and women's rights, on-site co-creation. And whereas the foundation and the Asbury Park City Council believe that voting is the cornerstone of democracy. Now therefore be it resolved that Mayor Moore and the Asbury Park City Council hereby encourage all Asbury Park residents to utilize their creative voice to help inspire the community to participate in the democratic process by using their political voice at their polling site on election day. November 5th, 2019, be it further resolved that the mayor and city council do hereby proclaim Wednesday, November 6, 2019 to be Social Justice Day in the city of Asbury Park. Mayor. So thank you so much for choosing to honor us with this beautiful proclamation. It is so well written, there's really not much more to say. I'm here today with members of my board, issue leaders, performers, all volunteers from the community that have dedicated their time and energy over the last six months to bring awareness to their specific issues, to bring the conversation to a civil level so that we can be informed voters on the 5th and every year going forward on the first Tuesday in November. Thank you so very, very much. Yes, thank you. This is Rhinel Ponder from Princeton, who in conjunction with Robert Sater Schreiber hosted 10 events for Art Against Racism because every issue leader feeds into the final event. They did a phenomenal job, and as racism intersects every aspect of our life, they will be the major component of the November 6th event um, at the House of Independence. Next, Nicole Teish, doing children's rights, family separation issue, very, very important issue. We have Miss G, who's volunteered to come and provide for some musical entertainment and social justice songs for us. We have Anthony Giorgio um, bringing us performance art from Queer Teens. He's the host of the Queer Teen podcast. And uh, we actually trademark human rights because his theme is queer rights are human rights. So that's a great opportunity. 
And we have Gabrielle Lavari, who is heading up with a partner, Adrian, who's not here tonight, gun violence, art against gun violence. And last but not least, Grace Ann Tallarico with Women's Rights. She's partnering with Tiffany Miller, who's not able to be here tonight as well. So, Fantastic. thank you. We're on to city manager's report on issues raised at prior council meeting. Not at this time. We're on to special events application. Good evening, Mayor and Council. The first application before you is for a ceasefire prayer vigil to be held in Springwood Park on October 10th. Next is the homecoming parade, which would begin here in the parking lot of City Hall on October 18th. Trunk or treat, uh, again, held in the parking lot on Halloween, October 31st. Rana Palooza um, is returning to Asbury Park on April 18th. 221 on April 25th. Um, the Lobster Run on April 18th. I'm sorry, the Runner Palooza is on the 25th. Um, lobster Run is on the 18th. The Asbury Park Spring Fling would be in Springwood Park on May 2nd. Crohn's and Colitis Foundation, uh, their annual walk will be on May 17th. The Asbury Park Icebreaker Ocean Swim Race is on June 20th. Books on the Boardwalk would be October 10th. Uh, the See Here Now Festival. This application is just uh, to hold the dates for um, 2020, uh, 2021, 22, 23, and 24. Dates only at this point. And the last Eight applications are all weddings for 2020. Mayor, I don't need to go through the weddings, do I? <laughs> okay. Are there any questions? Okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much. We are on to items to be presented by Michelle Alonzo, Director of Planning and Redevelopment. Tonight's presentation is actually going to be by AP Triangle. Good evening, council members. My name is Jennifer Porter. I'm an attorney with CSG, and I'm here tonight on behalf of the applicant, AP Triangle. AP Triangle is an affiliate of ISTAR, the master developer in connection with the waterfront redevelopment area. And AP Triangle has applied for and is in the process of obtaining subsequent developer status in connection with this application. Now, AP Triangle is aptly named um, for this particular project um, because it's named for the triangular parcel, which is the subject of this application. So before I give you a very brief overview of the project and before we get into some of the, the great features of this project that we're going to present for you tonight, I just wanted to hand out which basically shows the waterfront redevelopment area and the surrounding parcels, which include um, our close proximity of this parcel, which I can point out right here. The triangle is formed by three street intersections at Asbury Avenue, Hat Street, and Coconut Avenue. And it's in very close proximity to the Monroe Project and the South Grand Project. So as I indicated, the property is within the WRA, founded by Heck Asbury and Cookman, and it's near other residential projects. 
Now what AP triangle is seeking to do here is to subdivide the triangular parcel that you see before you into three lots. Approximately just over two acres of it would be developed with the residential townhome project, which is the application um, before you this evening. It's to develop three, three sets of, of 16 unit buildings um, for a total of 48 residential townhomes. The two remainder lots of the triangular block, so the remainder at um, the intersection of Heck and Cookman would be developed at a later date as a public parcel. And so the applicant has no immediate plans in terms of the development of that parcel. However, the applicant is willing to um, commit on the record that it will be maintained um, in, in the future until it is developed as a public parcel um, in its current state as grass. And it is willing to agree as a condition of its planning board approval once it moves forward that it will be developed as a public parcel. And so um, in order to ensure that there's no um, intentions or a possibility in the future for vertical construction on that lot. Um, the additional lot, which you see um, at, at the other end of the property, there are no immediate plans for, for redevelopment of that piece of the triangle lot. So that will be reserved for the future. So AP Triangle, just by way of brief background, met with the TRC on this application back in July. They had a number of great recommendations for the project. The substantial majority of those recommendations have been incorporated into the revised design, which is going to be presented to the council this evening. And um, we, will, we will touch upon the highlights of that. You know, in addition to that, one item which came up during TRC was a question with regard to the height requirements as they relate to the development control plan that's in effect for the waterfront redevelopment plan. Something that's of important to note, which the council is well aware of, is that there have recently been adopted waterfront redevelopment plan amendments, um, which essentially make all aspects of the height of the proposed project conforming. And so that goes to, you know, the overall compliance of our project with the um, waterfront redevelopment plan. Now, in terms of some of the benefits of this project, which are important to note and which are set forth in our subsequent developer application, um, there's a significant amount of municipal revenue that will be generated by virtue of this project. In terms of sewer fees, we estimate that the um, municipality will gain approximately $218,000 worth of sewer fees. In terms of taxes, um, currently um, we pay approximately $115,000 in taxes uh, in terms of the increase in taxes once the property is development, that should increase fourfold um, to be in the $400,000 range. So in terms of our testimony this evening, we will keep it brief, um, but also informative in terms of you know the highlights of the project. So we're going to briefly walk you through the proposed architecture. We're going to hit upon um, the key aspects of our site plan, touch upon landscaping since that is a significant um, aspect to this site, and then we'll end very briefly with, with a planning overview. And so unless the council has any questions for myself, I'd like to turn it over to Frank Minervini, our architect. Yeah, let me just hold you up one second just because going through it and it was towards the end uh, where you mentioned the sewer, mm -hmm. hookup fees, and then an increase of fourfold. That's if you're granted a pilot. Correct. And okay, and that has not been done yet. So no. if, if this moves forward, it's going to be a pilot has not been agreed upon. Not yet. Um, I know that that is something that's also being worked on in connection with the subsequent developer agreement. There's also a, you know, a, a pilot. Okay, but for this project right now, there is no pilot. Correct. Okay. And there's no guarantee you're going to get a pilot. Correct. Okay. Correct. I just didn't want you to think we're passing. This is this. an anticipation in the event that that okay. works. I just didn't want the planning board, if it's passed on the planning board, to think one of the conditions of is a pilot. Understood. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Frank Minervini. I'm the architect for the project. A uh, quick overview, just to continue what Jennifer has said in terms of location. She mentioned that we've got 48 residential units in three structures. So we've got one, two, and three. To orient you, this is Asbury Avenue, this is Cookman Avenue, and this is Head Street. So we've got three separate structures, each with eight connected townhomes. Each townhome has two units. Very simply, um, through our internal circulation, we've got an entrance to two. You would access one unit in front, one unit in back, one unit in front. So 
Very simply, each of these townhomes has two units, a total of 16 per structure. Three structures gives us 48 units. That's the site, uh, and Sean, now we're site engineering gets more detailed if, if required. So I'm here to talk about the aesthetics, mo mostly. So our design, we think, is a contemporary interpretation of, a, of an urban beachfront aesthetic. And how we, we think we achieve that is use materials, scale, as well as projections. So in terms of materials, what we've done, we've used, in each of these cases, the materials are, are man-made and meant to mimic wood. Um, so it's a fiber cement shake, a fiber cement a vertical siding, a fiber cement horizontal siding. And in those cases, it's meant to mimic a, uh, a wood siding. The colors are all in gray tones with the exception of several beige, which are white. But the idea behind the gray tones is it meant to, again, mimic a weathered wood. Um, this perspective doesn't really show you, but as part of this design, there's also pitched roofs. And we think that also ties it back into the aesthetic that I've referred to. So you can see from this perspective, which is um, facing the interior, the pitched roof section. The building is four stories tall, with the exception of each of the corners. So each of these corners, the end units, are three stories. So four stories, three stories at the corners. And I know Jeff mentioned that height is not any longer an issue. But that's how we achieved even the previous design. Each of the units has two parking spaces, uh, one internal garage and one in the driveway, with a total of 96 parking spaces. So there's 48 units, 96 parking spaces. Um, vehicular access is off a path, and Sean, our site designer, will get into more detail with that. Um, we think, in terms of aesthetics, it's a quality design. Uh, materials are meant to uh, pay tribute to what we would see in the past in locations like this. However, it's been tweaked for a, a more contemporary and uh, multifamily building. Um, bay projections, the, the purpose of those is really to give some uh, dynamics and movement to the front facade as opposed to having a very long, plain, straight facade. So all these things together, we think, uh, make this a very attractive building for something that is certainly suitable for its location. In terms of the TRC, uh, in architecture, we made two revisions based on the comments at the TRC. Uh, one was, better record to show, was the height of, one of the comments was, as originally designed, the height of the, we'll call it a fence, along Heck and, and, um, all, and, Heck and Asbury was 60 inches high. So we heard, heard the comments, they said, please, let's talk about reducing that. We re reduce it to 48 inches. Another comment was on the initial design, where I mentioned that some of these bay projections had a metal cladding as opposed to this fiber cement board. Uh, the metal cladding, we all came to think together at that meeting, was probably not reminiscent enough of what you would see in a design, a contemporary version, of course, of a, uh, an urban beachfront design. So we removed that, replaced it with the, the fiber cement board, and I should mention that one of the, some of the good features of these fiber cement boards is, is that they last very, very long. You don't lose their color, um, and it, they do very well mimic wood, what you would have in the past. So uh, some of the negatives that you would have with wood are here, but uh, the positives, low maintenance, and, and the way it looks now when it's built should be how it looks for at least 50 years. So I think that's it for the architecture. I could go through the plan. I'm not sure if it's necessary, uh, the actual floor plan. I know there may be some questions. Um, very simply, there's each of these townhomes is the front unit and the back unit. Um, they, they range in size from approximately 9, 1,900 square feet to 2,800 square feet. So there's a range in size. They're all uh, relatively nice in size. Three or four better. <coughs> and I think that's it. Okay, go back to your first picture, please. Yes. So I think I see it. So the fence we're talking about is there? Yes. Okay, does that, is this, is that just, as you just said, just on two sides of the building, or does that go all four sides of the buildings? No, it's on the street sides. So we, we not internal to the, to our, to the building, we're buildings, we've got our circulation of vehicular. Right, right, so, so, so it's on Heck, it's on Asbury, yeah. and on yes. Cookman. Yes. Cookman, Heck, and As yes. Asbury. Okay, thank you. but not on the east side of the building. Correct. That's okay. Correct. Thank you.
east side. Here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. So we and our site designer will get into this, but yes, there there is a, a walkway that connects here, and these little sections, which are the front of some of the units, a back of some of the units, does have that same fence. Okay. So so I guess basically the around the entire exterior of the building. Okay. Yeah, and I was trying to make the point that they're doing so well that internally here we don't have those. Spaces. No, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. No. Thank you. Is it is probably for the engineer? Staging area. The rest of the lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's under ownership by the, the, uh, the right. Okay. Developer, so they would use the rest of the lot or another area so deep um, that would be included in the application of the planning board. Did you want to make a presentation? Not okay. Yeah. He's next. <laughs> okay. I'm so sorry. Sean Delaney was going <laughs> before I ask my before I <laughs> before I ask my questions. <laughs> Good evening, uh, Sean Delaney, the uh, site civil for the, for the project. Um, Frank had, had touched on the locations that surround us, so I'm not going to hem up to go back over that. Um, access to the facility or to the, the development will be up a hex street with a 24 foot wide drive aisle up to the T intersection. Um, one of the comments from the TRC um, meeting committee was to uh, try to maybe reduce the internal drive aisles down to 20 feet, reduce some pavement, and provide a, um, a walking path the end of those driveways um, for people of, of that area and because of the way the units are set up for the front and back um, some of the units are in front only have the one access out to the front to the internal drive areas so it was, it was a safety concern that the TRC pointed out and we'd like to see so we added those in um, through the development um, to provide that area at the end of the driveways while maintaining a 20 foot deep driveway so a car can park will not encroach into those uh, walkway areas uh, another comment was to try and push the uh, building number three a little further off of Cookman Avenue, um, further to the north, uh, by reducing the, the drive aisle west to 20 feet and, and shorten the distance between the curb and the building. We've increased that from just over a foot to almost to a little more than four and a half feet now. Um, so it gets a little more separation. That's from the property line. The sidewalk still uh, right now is a little bit further off of that, so there's still quite a over 10 feet separation uh, in those locations. Um, Circulation on the site, we still have sidewalks on both sides coming in the main, main driveway up to the T, cluster mailbox in the corner. Um, sidewalks extend out the back of the patio areas where they're, they're part of the units on the ground floor out to a walkway um, running between Asbury and Cookman. It's also extended the walkway in front of building number two down also down to Cookman Avenue um, to provide some pedestrian circulation to and from the property and not funnel everybody off just through the main entrance driveway uh, for circulation. Um, Frank mentioned we have uh, 96 uh, parking spaces on site, uh, which exceeds that required by the waterfront pre-development plan. Um, <coughs> streetscaping, there were the existing improvements along Asbury and Heck Street in terms of pavers and lighting already placed um, as part of development. Any other amenities that we have to put up there, uh, benches, bike racks, trash enclosures will be included as part of the, uh, the development as well. Um, all, you know, one thing that's always important with everybody is all these utilities. Um, they will all be run underground, so we don't have any visible poles or anything through the site. The meters will be on the side of the building we will, you know, for gas and electric that will be uh, screened from view with landscaping and, and or other means as necessary uh, for that. <coughs> there is a, uh, a fence along the eastern property line that we're, we're placing as well to separate the remainder parcel from this for some privacy and security. Um, that fence does extend from the building corners um, across the front right away line, too, and it will be a gated access. Um, so it really is there for the residents, you know, being able to come out of the back and walk out to the roads instead of having to circulate all the way through out Tech Street and then come down as we're cooking out. And, uh, as, as Frank was talking about with the, with the fences um, as well. The buildings are set about 10 feet off of uh, Heck Street and Asbury Avenue um, with those little uh, back uh, patio areas or amenity spaces for the residents on the ground floor. Um, there's gated access um, into those spaces. Uh, they will have a, a fence, as he mentioned. They are about 10 feet off on each of those frontages and on each side of building number three um, in that location. 
lighting. Uh, I was listening to uh, permit some, some plans show the locations of lights on the uh, ground floor up on the top on the, uh, the decks on top of the buildings. Um, small little wall-mounted sconces and lights of, of, the, dry, of the garage entrances, um, back patio entrances um, into the units, uh, sconces up on the, the top of the, the units and some of the entrances into the areas uh, from the internal driveway circulation uh, to the driveways between the two buildings. We've also added some additional lights. That was a recommendation of the TRC uh, because of the long distance in there. Uh, there's a light over each, at each doorway and then an intermediate light as well between the garage uh, in front of the building and the doorways to help illuminate that area. Uh, enough for safety, but not, you know, not to make it a, uh, a nuisance. Uh, wall light is designed to really be there for aesthetics and architectural for safety, but not to become a nuisance for surrounding properties or adjacent properties. Uh, we're still looking at the additional need for maybe an additional light pole or so on the intersections and side to light those for vehicles coming in and out. Once again, it would be kept at a minimum because it's residential. We don't want to light this like a uh, commercial parking lot. So, uh, and I believe in the, also in the resubmission, there are some, uh, we'll talk about possibly some bothered lights along the walking path low level in those areas just to keep that relation for safety. Yep, uh, the driveways and before you narrow them, can, uh, I'll use the word, can we get emergency vehicles into the compound? Yes, we, we have looked at the attorney templates um, for vehicles to be able to, emergency vehicles to come down, they would, because it's a T intersection, they'd come in, come down to back out, use the long T. Uh, yeah, same thing with garbage trucks um, to access any uh, trash. Okay. So you, you, you say we, we provide that information also. On that, uh, right. Okay. <laughs> so where would the garbage and recycling be stored, and how would yeah. it be, who would pick it up? The garbage recycling like, be stored be internally inside the unit. It'd be by a private hall, I believe. Okay. Uh, somewhere, uh, somewhere on the, on the property. Do we lose any street parking spots because of the cuts? There's one one space that would be lost. Um, we try to keep the driveway in, in the current location where there's a curb cut right now. It just pushed over just a little bit um, to the north that cut into the one space that was there. So there's one space that's lost on that street. All right. That's all I have. Uh, there was one question about moving the air conditioning units from the front. Okay. Um, we did take a look at that, and because of the, the makeup of the way these units are set up, um, being a front-to-back unit as opposed to a stack on top of each unit, um, it's very difficult um, because of the ownership to be able to run you know, those kind of lines underneath somebody else's building in case of a problem. Or, 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 um, we also believe that these buildings have been done by um, in other areas. Um, the, they will be tucked back against the building. There will be some landscaping screening to help. Uh, Reduce any noise and, and effects uh, that anybody walking on the streets would, would look at. Um, there are also, I think we did forget to mention, there are also two units stacked at the front already um, on the driveway side for the units that face the interior courtyards. So we do have we do have some on the inside already, and then these would just be you know, two units on each end of the back side that we did look at and just didn't uh, um, look at possibly even putting up on the roof with maintenance concerns. Accessibility issues that become more problematic than, uh, yeah. than more, more problem that's benefiting. So, we had we looked at a number of engineering considerations and all, ultimately just determined that it was not feasible for them to be located um, anywhere else on the site. And as he indicated, for height reasons, for building design reasons, the way that these are particularly situated, it just wasn't something that, that could be done in terms of the overall design of the site. Thank and Sean mentioned, if I might add, that there is a difficulty in having convincing units up on the roof of just having to remove them. It's we need a crane depending on the size of it. So the way we looked at this would make much more sense to keep that ground level easily maintained, can be screened, but we're proposing. And um, the ownership, there's no issues with the ownership going through stairs or on someone else's roof. So that's how we wound up there, as, as, along the reason that Sean said. Okay, thank you.
So we're now going to have some additional brief testimony on landscaping. This is from Brian Levy. Good evening, Brian Levy, the landscape architect. Uh, the project, we're starting off with a great looking building, so it makes my job real easy. All I have to do is come up with something that complements that. To do that, the key feature we're providing uh, screen plankings along the proposed open space to try and provide some privacy and separation uh, when that does get developed. As we mentioned earlier, there are patch, individual patios around the out, outside of all the units. Uh, we're providing landscaping for privacy and aesthetics around each one of those. And we're providing a substantial amount of landscaping along the eastern border where we're proposing the fence. Uh, to soften the look of the fence a little bit, and to just make that area very attractive, almost park-like. Uh, plants that we're using are all salt tolerant, and most of them are native. The original submission to the TRC included a few exotic plants. Uh, after meeting with Mike Sullivan of Clark, Kate, and Hintz, we came up with a plant list that was much more native, much more diverse, takes advantage of a lot more perennials, uh, fewer ground covers, original plant, I believe, had ex large expanses of variety as a ground cover, which you see quite often around the city. Uh, but we thought, thought it was time to break away from that a little bit, break up some of those areas and provide some additional color, some uh, salt tolerant perennials, particularly the native type. Uh, so as, as the seasons go by, this property is just going to change colors from day to day. That's really all there is for the landscape. There's... Yeah, very nice. Thank you. Okay, so we have Ken who is just to give some very brief points in terms of the overall planning principles related to the site. I can be very brief, just wrapping up, but the project itself is certainly consistent with the redevelopment plan in terms of the use. You heard from Frank on the architecture. I agree that this is a contemporary interpretation of front urban architecture so it's consistent with the intent of the architectural guidelines uh, we will be requesting a few waivers as is customary from the guidelines from the planning board um, a few of those are enumerated in Michelle's report um, and I think we've touched on a few of those this evening uh, the parking exceeds the requirement height is not compliant with the plan based on the, the recent amendment um, so I know there's a you know a few comments that we'll be looking forward to addressing with the planning board, but other than that, um, for purposes of compliance with you as council, um, in my opinion, it's, it's very much compliant with the redevelopment plan. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, you know, you've heard the testimony from the applicant, and at this point, we would, uh, you know, like to proceed with council recommendation that we can proceed to the planning board as we continue to work on the subsequent developer agreement and other aspects of this project with the council and with the city. Okay, let me just one more question. The map in the white area not being used at this point, the trial one, one, two, three, and four, that's going to be for public use down the road? That's correct. Okay, thank you. Okay. That's it, thank you, okay. very nice job. On to the review of agenda items for the October 9th regular meeting. There are three items on the consent agenda. Uh, resolutions 2019-321 is special events. 322 and 323 are grants that the city received, and these are chapter 159s to allow the authorization to put it into the budget. Um, is there any questions on the consent agenda items? 
Hearing none, moving on to individual resolutions. 324 is the uh, approving the payment of bills. 325 and 326 are um, purchase requests that are over the quote threshold. So we need to have those authorized by um, the governing body. 327 is construction, design and construction administration services for the um, the beach station, the lifeguard station, I'm sorry, um, for T&M. And 328 is also for T&M to design the traffic signal um, and construction administ administration for Asbury and Ridge. 329, 330 are RCAs. One is for 1405 Madison. The other one is 1105 Emory Street. Um, 331 is changed. Yeah, just no big deal on those side. But we always ask, like, let us know what's being done. Yeah. On the RCA projects. Okay, I'll get the list from Carrie and just send them out. Yeah. For next meeting. Don't worry about these two. From here on out. Resolution 331 is change order number one to the Ottawa Group for the Bradley Co. valuation. This is to cover additional unexpected meetings. And 332 is awarding a contract for the um, proposed city hall parking structure um, to Tim Haas and Associates. Is there any comments on the individual resolutions? I have one. 325, could you just explain what a camera truck is? Indeed. I'll read it here. Uh, the question was, what is a camera truck? It's our sewer truck that goes into sewer lines and has a camera on it to see where there's cracks or breaks. Okay. And my question is, from 326, what is an air pack? Kevin can answer that one. It's air pack. It's a self-contained breathing apparatus. You see a firefighter with tanks that they wear on their back to breathe the fires. The scout packs, whatever. It's the whole assembly. So they're assigned to each truck? They're not? They're, they're too expensive to, to assign to every firefighter, so they're assigned to every riding position on the fire trucks. Thank you. Moving forward for introduction of ordinances, um, 43. Resolute Ordinance 2019-43 is, is a sum of $30,000 for computers and related equipment in the police department. Uh, this is a capital surplus ordinance. There is numerous computers that are ending use at the end of useful life in the um, police department. Most of them are operating system related and it's, it is simpler and cheaper and more affordable to actually buy new ones and try to upgrade these. 2019-44 um, is for 545 Lake Avenue Urban Renewal LLC. This is the court ordered um, pilot for this project. And 2019-34 um, is being re-advertised. Is, is this one that had the, mm -hmm. the publication issue? Mm -hmm. um, this was already approved once, but there was a publication issue. So bond council was recommended. Don't mess with it, just redo it. Um, so this is for introduction again. For second reading tonight is 2019-42 for approximately $1.375 million for the lifeguard station. Thank you. On to matters from City Council. Okay. <clears throat> On Wednesday, October 16th, we'll be hosting a City Commission committee um, and commission information session at um, seven o'clock at the Asbury Park Senior Center and representatives from each of the committees and commissions um, throughout the city will be there on hand to talk about those commissions and committees and to encourage new residents to sign on and, uh, and volunteer. On um, October 19th, Asbury Underground is hosting the Downtown Art and Music Crawl. Uh, there'll be 150 performers uh, in different venues, traditional and non-traditional venues throughout the downtown area. And October 19th from nine to noon is the Wesley Lake Cleanup. That's all I have. Tomorrow evening, there will be a ceasefire prayer vigil in the Springwood Avenue Park, sponsored by Asbury Park Can, and it is scheduled from 6 to 7 p.m. In the event of rain, it will be postponed until further notice. Um, all are encouraged to attend. And on Saturday, October 12th, 
from 11 to 3. The Quality of Life Committee is sponsoring Pride in the Park, and there are a number of events going happening. Um, one is free recycling. If you can bring something um, that's in good condition, it will be given away to whoever wants it. Uh, there will be free bicycle helmets and lights given away. Uh, there's going to be a prescription medicine drop-off box, free smoke detectors, vendors, and a farmer's market, and music, and a DJ. So we're every, asking everyone to come out and enjoy us. Thank you. As for recreation, we'll be having a re the annual Trunk or Treat. That's October the 31st of this year. Um, this year, let, let me speak of last year. Last year was a success. We had at least, I would say, over a thousand uh, children attend, and we're looking for a bigger crowd this year. Well, we do need more sponsors, and we do need more volunteers. And uh, you can call the office, Alicia Floyd. That's 732-502-5759. The Recreation Committee appreciate it. Thank you. All right. So the city is banning single-use plastic bags. We actually already passed it, but it's taking place at uh, January 1 of 2020. There's a couple of exceptions. You can go on the website and read about them. But as of January of 2020, um, single-use plastic bags are going to be banned. Uh, the city is also engaging in a photo contest. Um, if you have some photos that you've taken around town and you want to submit to Sonia that we will put in our calendar or newsletters, you can email them at photos at cityofasburypark.com. Um, and the deadline for that is October 25th. The city of Asbury Park is, has spent, you got Yvonne and I have probably spent the better part of nine months meeting with nonprofits, churches, community leaders, and other towns that have human rights committees or commissions. Uh, we came up with a brief survey. We put it online and actually mailed it to city residents and are asking that you take a look at it, fill it out either online or at your home and mail it back in. If for some reason you can't mail it back in, if you get in touch with me or Yvonne, we will come pick it up. Um, so we're asking people to fill that survey out. And last Saturday is the Equality Walk in Asbury Park. It starts at 4 o'clock at Kennedy Park, if anybody wants to go. On Saturday... No, on Wednesday, October 16th, from 11 to 3 at the Senior Center is a uh, Mayor's Wellness Committee at Harvest Health Fair. Uh, tomorrow night, the Historical Society is having their first annual uh, Recognizing People in Asbury Park. That's at Jimmy's from 6 to 9. Uh, a little bit of house cleaning. The November meetings are November 7th and November 26th. It was originally scheduled for the 20th, so we're changing that to the 26th. And the December meetings are... December 11th and 18th. That's it. We're on to matters from the city manager. We have the best practice inventory. Thank you. For the last maybe six or seven years, the state of New Jersey has implemented the best management practice inventory. Uh, this is a requirement in order to receive a portion of or the full amount of your of the municipality's fourth quarter uh, municipal aid. For the last four years, we have met or exceeded all the management practices. Um, this year, you needed to score 30, <clears throat> excuse me, in order to receive the entire aid, I stopped counting at 34. Um, the fiscal monitor was very happy of how um, we're operating and exceeding the best management practices inventory year after year. Um, so we want to thank everyone. If there's any questions on it, it's a lot of the questions are the same from last year. So we're doing well. Two matters from the city attorney. Nothing at this time. Okay. Do you want to go right in, John? Yep. Okay. <clears throat> Regular meeting call to order. Council Member Chapman? Here. Council Member Clayton? Here. Council Member Kendall? Here. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Just stepped away. Mayor Moore? Here. We'll stand. Please stand for a silent prayer, a moment of reflection. We'll now salute the flag. 
I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As to comply with the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, PL 1975, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in the following manner. The annual notice was forwarded to the Esbury Park Press, the Coaster, the Star Ledger on January 2nd, 2019, and posted on the bulletin board of the same date. All notices are on file with the city clerk. We're on to the public participation portion of the meeting. Do I have a motion to open this <coughs> meeting to the public? <coughs> All in favor? Please come to the mic, state your name and address for the record. My name is William Thorpe. I was here uh, two weeks ago in reference to a problem I was having with a bird feeder, which is down the street from me. I was under the impression I left my number that someone would call me and I haven't heard anything. Was I under the wrong impression? Michael? Yes, I called you the next day and it just kept ringing, so I didn't know if I had the number wrong or um, your voicemail wasn't set up. Uh, we looked into it. The bird feeder is permitted. There's nothing that we have any regulation that could change the bird feeder. Okay, so there's nothing that can be done? No. Okay, thanks a lot. William, can I have your last name, please? Sure. Thank you. Hi, Rita Moreno, 8th Avenue. Uh, first, what's a quality walk? I don't know what that is. It's a fundraiser I've been for gardens. a long time. I don't know what a quality walk is. And the other thing, uh, I got three of those surveys in the mail. That's three stamps there. And it just went out to postal. It didn't go out to uh, Rita Morano's address. It just went out to postal. So nobody's going to get those. And the other thing, what is that about? If you're running, according to what I read on that survey, if you're running a business and an employee is unhappy with you, they could come to this council and, and report it. Don't we have enough rules and regulations with running a business? I think it's kind of ridiculous. You got 17 committees, some of them are non functional, and the zoning board at the last, uh, not last night's meeting, the meeting before took a historical house that's been there since the 1800s, and they're going to let it knock it down. And they voted for that. I mean, I don't know what the Historical Society is doing, but that is a historical landmark, and it should be looked at again by this council. I mean, it's ridiculous. That house is from 18-something. They're going to knock it down, and then they got permission to move the house, that whatever they're going to build, uh, 17 uh, feet from the curb, when all those houses are 25 feet. And, and you, you got all these committees, but some of them don't know what they're doing. I mean, you have to have a real background check on everybody that you put on the committee, because a lot of things are going wrong with these committees. So I'd like to know what the quality walk is, Amy. It's a fundraiser, fundraiser for Garden State Equality. They walk from Kennedy Park to Convention Hall. Well, you should say that because okay. not everybody knows that. Um, huh? It's Saturday. I apologize for not explaining what the Equality Walk is. And the other thing about the, this survey, I don't think it's any of your business what businesses do. I mean, unless they're breaking the law, if they have a dysfunctional employee and they fire them, they could come here. And, and the, some council can hear them, that's an unprofessional council. Who are you gonna pick? People from the audience here? I mean, you know, you have to be careful about what you do. That's not fair. And everything you said tonight was all social again. How about trying to cut down expenses? It, wouldn't that be a good thing for you to work on? You don't work on anything like that. Everything you do is social. Cutting ribbons, photo shots. 
So, I mean, like, what's this committee about? Council, it's called. Well, what is it? It's, it's step one. No, it's probably step 10, because Amy said they've been working on it for about nine months, and now this is for public input. We'll get the public <coughs> input, and we'll proceed from there. So you can fill out your three you got today and say you're against it. It's transparency. And the other thing is, how about using your microphone so nobody can hear what you say? I hear you, John. Okay, thank you, Rita. And as far as like the council not being wary of the tax dollar, I, I totally disagree with you. And if you were here two weeks ago when we, the insurance agency read what our deductibles were, 95,000 down to 65,000 and everything else, and how much money this council has saved. And believe me, it's the most dedicated council as far as cutting irresponsible spending in the history of Asbury Park. That's my opinion. And you can disagree, but I think we've done a great job. Is that as the guy that gave you $1,000? It's a guy who also, he, 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 he's probably saved us close to $2 million in potential fees. Rita, that $1,000 was because we exceeded... What was that? The thousand dollars was actually for us exceeding um, the recommended standards for our insurance carrier. We we did so well that they gave us money back. Okay, <laughs> thank you, Rita. Teresa Jones, all of this is owner in town. Um, question: The parade, from my understanding, is going down Grand Avenue. There's a, there was a parade that was mentioned, the special events. Homecoming? Yeah. I believe so. Now, but because now, see, we need to, like, get back to being more inclusive. For years, we've had parades go down Main Street. This way you kind of bring in folks from all sides of the city, the children, the young people, the majority of people that may also be here because we do have the tale of two cities here in the city of Asbury Park. So I, I would suggest that we go back to parades down Main Street where it's inclusive. Uh, I would agree with you maybe once Main Street's done, but in the condition it is right now. And plus, that's the Board of Education's request. It was not no, our... No, 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 not just with that parade, but other parades as well. Okay, but this one you're talking more, about... But No, no, I'm just talking about <coughs> parades in general. Bring in more inclusion, more community inclusion, because right now... Asbury Park is a tale of two cities. Parades are very expensive to run. You now, I understand all, but I'm talking about even in general with other activities. Asbury Park is a tale of two cities. That's one little tiny fragment that can help bring some more cohesive inclusiveness together. Okay, thank you, Teresa. Move to close. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. We're on two minutes. We are. No, no, it's closed. We'll close it. <coughs> we have the executive session minutes of September 25th, the work session minutes of September 25th, and the regular council meeting minutes of September 25th. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. We're on to the consent agenda. We have 2019-321, a resolution approving special events applications. 2019-322, a resolution of the City of Asbury Park, County of Monmouth, State of New Jersey, providing for the insertion of special items of revenue in the 2019 budget of the City of Asbury Park, pursuant to NJSA 40A colon 4-87 chapter 159, Justice Assistance Grant. 2019-323, a resolution of the City of Asbury Park, County of Monmouth, State of New Jersey, providing for the insertion of special items of revenue in the 2019 budget of the City of Asbury Park, pursuant to NJSA 40A colon 4-87, Chapter 159, Bulletproof Vest Partnership. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. 
We're on to individual resolutions. We have resolution 2019-324, a resolution approving the payment of bills. Do I have a motion? Second. Council Member Chapman? Yes. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? No. On to resolution 2019-325, a resolution authorizing the purchase of various parts and materials to repair the camera truck pipe ranger at the Department of Public Works. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Council Member Chapman? Yes. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2019-326, a resolution authorizing the purchase of air packs for the aerial ladder fire truck. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Council Member Chapman? Yes. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution authorizing the design and construction administration services to TM Associates for a multi-use station at the boardwalk. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Council Member Chapman? Yes. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution authorizing design service contract administration and, and inspection services to TM Associates for Asbury and Ridge Avenue traffic signal improvements. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Council Member Chapman? Yes. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. We're on to resolution 2019 329, a resolution <coughs> approving an award of a contract for regional contribution agreement project. 1405 Madison Avenue. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Council Member Chapman? No. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? No. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution approving an award of a contract for a regional contribution agreement project, 1105 Emory Street. And that's 2019 330. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Council Member Chapman? No. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? No. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2019 331, a resolution awarding change order number one to the contract for appraisal services evaluation to the Ottawa Group. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Council Member Chapman? Yes. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. A resolution awarding a contract for the parking planning and design of the Central Business District parking structure, and that's resolution 2019-332. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Council Member Chapman? Yes. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. For the record, just read in who it was. You want to just read the company? Oh, sure. I got to call it out. It is to Timothy Haas and Associates. Thank you. We are on to individual ordinances for introduction. We have Ordinance 2019-43. It's a capital ordinance appropriating the sum of $30,000 for computers and related equipment for the police department, a public hearing date of October 23rd. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Council Member Chapman? Yes. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Mayor Moore? Yeah, I know. I'm oh. thinking. Oh. Well, why is it the 23rd? That's mm -hmm. whoever. No, no, no. The capital ordinance. I mean, for I don't care, but I mean. It's just so we can get stuff done by the end of the year. Whoever, yeah. Okay. Yes. We're on to 2019-44, an ordinance of the City of Asbury Park, the County of Monmouth, approving a long-term tax exemption pursuant to NJSA 40A-20 <laughs> and authorizing the mayor and city clerk to execute a financial agreement by and between the City of Asbury Park and 540. 545 Lake Avenue Urban Renewal LLC for property located at Block 3105, formerly Block 117, Lot 4.02, as shown on the official tax map of the City of Asbury Park, and located in the Central Business District Redevelopment Area, with
with a public hearing date of October 23rd. Do I have a motion? Move it. Second. Council Member Chapman. Question. Yep. Michael, before the next meeting, I talked to you the other day. Can you just get us the numbers? Yes. And compare it to what it would have been and what it should be? Yes. Okay, thank you. Council Member Chapman? Yes. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. We're on to 2019-34, the bond ordinance amending and supplementing bond ordinance number 2019-7, which provides for parking utility improvements, heretofore finally adopted by the City Council in the City of Asbury Park and the County of Monmouth, the State of New Jersey, on March 13, 2019 to increase the appropriation by 135,000 and increase the authorization of bonds or notes by 135,000 with a public hearing date of October 23rd. Do I have a motion? Move it, second. Council Member Chapman? Yes. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. We are on to 2019, we're on to second reading public hearing. We have 2019-42, a bond ordinance providing for the beach utility improvements by and in the city of Asbury Park in the county of Monmouth, the state of New Jersey, appropriating 1,375,000, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of 1,375,000 bonds or notes of the city to finance part of the cost thereof. Do I have a motion to open 2019-42 to the public? Move it. Open. Second. All in favor? Aye. 2019-42 is now open to the public. Are there any members of the public who have a question? Please come to the mic and state your name and address for the record. Uh, Rita Moreno, 8th Avenue. Could you explain this? Talking about a million dollars. What's the bond issue about? Like you want to explain it? It's for the lifeguard station for the lifeguards on the beach. Wait a minute. What happened to the beach budget? This is paid out of the beach utility. What? This is paid out of the beach utility. You're going to take, we're borrowing on the beach utility? Yes. Why is that? Don't they have the money there? Yes and no. Why, why, would, why would you bond if you have the money already? Because you would have to put it into the budget, and there's budget restrictions on how much you can raise within the utilities. And this way, it also improves cash flow. You're paying $1 million over 20 years, which is 50000 a year, or do you want to take a one-time hit at a $1 million? Yeah, but wouldn't you rather pay it than borrow? Not necessarily, not in this I case. Mean, in, uh, in the real world, that's what you do. Why would you want to pay interest? Uh, right now, our interest is 1.2% that we've been getting. So there's, there's real no cost to us. And in um, a capital ordinance, the first three years are actually just interest. So it's a cash flow issue. But why are we borrowing all this money for the beach? I don't get it. What is it for? The lifeguard station. Lifeguards? Lifeguard station. Yes. Lifeguard station. The lifeguard station, which will be multifunctional. We'll get rid of that trailer that has been painted to sell the beach bathing tickets out of it. It'll add bathrooms onto the boardwalk. It'll give them an office. It'll give them a first aid room. It's something that's been needed for seven years. But what happened to the money that they gave you for Madison Marquette? Wasn't that for that? If I remember correctly, that's what it was for. I don't know what you're talking about, Rita. What? Don't they give you money every year? They give us something? menu money, and we can do whatever we want with it, but we decided to use it for other things. So, again, this is, the, I guess, the best way to pay for this. And, again, it's not going to be like – you're not going to see a tax increase because of this because we have enough money in beach surplus to pay this. And, like as Michael said, would you rather pay, like, 1.3 up front and then something goes bad, and then you need that surplus, or would you rather like pay fifty thousand or fifty-five thousand dollars for twenty years? I'd rather you spend the money you have and worry about the other money later. Well, that's what we do in the real world. Okay. No. 
Why would you want to pay interest on the money? Like Michael said, it, like Michael said, the first three years there is no interest, and the, after that it's one point two percent interest. So you're talking about like five hundred dollars a year. Now we never really did get a number on the bond and indebtedness, and or a beach revenue report that would have been nice this year to get because I'm sure it was good. Yes, and beach. the parking report. We don't get anything. We have to ask for everything. And so, you know, you, in the beginning uh, when you talk you're, about you're, it, you're correct. We should have given a beach bathing report. I'll tell you, we were up like uh, 12 to 15 percent. We'll give you the actual numbers uh, if you want to call Joanne or Michael tomorrow. If not, we'll do it at the next council meeting. And we should have praised the lifeguards and the beach staff for doing a great job. As much as we praise other departments, sometimes they're taken for granted. Uh, Spring Lake had a terrible tragedy the last day of the beach season. Uh, we, we went through a great beach season. We set records. We were up 12 to 15 percent from last year. And you're absolutely right. And I'll take a hit for that one. I should have made a report. I apologize. No, it's not you. It's the city manager that should have made. He's managing. We, we all work together. Uh, okay. Okay. Hi, Ernest Mignoli, 400 Deal Lake Drive, Asbury Park, New Jersey. So, um, as usual, um, we have to sit here and listen to... Er and Ernest, the only thing you can ask questions, or, and that's what you can do, ask questions about the ordinance in front of you tonight, that's what I'm doing. which is 2019-42. You know, Mayor, that's what I'm doing. Are you going to keep interrupting me? No, I'm going to straighten it out so I don't have to keep on interrupting you. So, <laughs> keep your question... <laughs> Keep your I questions to 2019-42. I'm talking about, the, I'm talking about okay. the million dollar bond. Go ahead. It's okay to go ahead? Yes. Thank you. So, look, I, we can never get any documents. Every, every time that, that document for that bond, that's a lot of money. And there's a lot of us who spend a lot of time on the beach. And I wouldn't pay a million dollars for a lifeguard stand. There's so many things already you have. Badge collecting stations. I mean, what more do the lifeguards need? Every, every time they turn around, they want a, a buggy or this or that. Look, it's a simple job. You go sit on a stand. I did it when I was a, a kid. You don't need all these accoutrements on a professional office. Then you close down the parking for them. I, I mean, look, it, it's a great job. and It's helping people and sometimes saving lives. But why just because we raise some money, you got to just spend it right away? I mean... I, I would say no, but what, what can I say? I'm only a taxpayer. You know, and we have to sit here every week after week and listen to you. Every time you come up with a budget, move it. Yes, move it. Yes, move it. And there goes all our money. How about saving some money? And then with this budget about the beach thing, right? Do you ever notice each time I ask you, can we get the paperwork? And you say, ah, tomorrow, call Michael. Right? You can't even talk to him. He doesn't answer the phone. We never get anything. Remember I asked you for the budget? <coughs> He's asking for the parking thing, the beach revenue. We okay. can't get anything. You're, you're straying from questions on oh, the okay. ordinance. Okay, so about the million dollars, is, it, is there anything I can do to formally object that you're just spending money like we don't have it? I, I think this city is bankrupt myself. It's just juggling money around. Okay, and, you're, and, you you're, know, you're, you're, stra money. you're making statements and you're not All asking right. questions on the ordinance. All right, you're spending a million three on a lifeguard. What exactly is it? Lifeguard station. And where is it going to be? Uh, next to the where, where the ticket booth is on like Third Avenue in that area. One of the trailers. No, the ticket the ticket. Oh, booth. that trail that's on the boardwalk. No, the the ticket booth by the Third Avenue steps going down to the beach in that general vicinity. In this. Yeah. Okay, and and a bid went out, I guess, for a million three. The, no, the. TNM has been authorized to start the process. I get it. So we can go out to bid and have it built hopefully before mm -hmm. the 2020 season. So TNN is involved. Correct. Is TNN here? I don't know and I don't care. So as taxpayers, you're going to hear a few of us. And then really, we're not going to get anything first before you could go and vote, because it seems like 
You're going to spend a million three right now, and only two people spoke, but we're both objecting. So what are you saying? Look, taxpayers, whatever you say, it doesn't matter. We're spending the money. And I'm talking about this. this. Yeah, but you're, you, it's not a question about the ordinance. That's your personal opinion. And no, my, pers my, my, personal, personal. my personal opinion is this was advertised twice on the city website, twice. And yes, you and Rita, unfortunately, there are only two here tonight to voice your opinion, and it's duly noted. Thank you. That's the end of my uh, comments? No, if you have questions, but I'm not going to... Yeah, I'm saying... Okay, questions what? on the ordinance. What? I'm not going to sit here what? and listen to a half hour worth of statements. They're just redundant. So if you have questions on this ordinance, we'll happily hear them and answer them. How many bids went out? None. So where'd you get the figure of a million three? We... we I hate to ask a, a sensible question. Okay. It's the engineer's estimate of the cost. Oh, so now, so there is a bid. No, there's an engineer's estimate of what the cost is going to be. So it hasn't wait. been bid yet. It hasn't been designed yet. We're getting the funding in place. So TNM has been authorized to put the bid specs together to finalize the design. It goes out to bid. It'll be awarded by council resolution as per the law. What the bid is is unknown, but that's the estimate that the engineer is saying. On this project, will, will the new uh, confirmed IWS consultant be involved? You know what I mean, right? No, please elaborate. Won't be, she won't be involved with this. Because I thought that it's a close connection between TNN and IWS, her company, and then all the problems with Homedale. Well, we'll again, that, that has nothing well, to do, well, with, it has nothing to do with this ordinance. I'm just trying to find out how you're going to approve something when we don't have a bid, we don't have a plan, you don't because you got to put the money in place before you can do anything. We, we, on a street project, we have to put the money in place before we can go out to bid. On a boiler project, we have to put the money in place before we go out to bid. On anything, you have to have the money in place. You just can't say we're going to do something without having the money in place by state law. Yeah, well, the thing is, but what if the taxpayers don't want it? Why is it that seven people, or I, mean, I don't know how many, one, two, three, four, five, six, and a city manager, why is it whatever you want happens? I guess that's the form of government we have. And there is the problem. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Hi. Hello, Louise. Louise Murray, 1604 Grand Avenue. Um, so I'm guessing, or I shouldn't say I'm guessing. So this facility, let me get this in my head, is going to be on 3rd Avenue, you think, right? Or you don't know for sure. You, you know where Duckies was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, in so front of Duckies, in that general area, but a little bit south of where Duckies was and where the beach bar for Duckies was down yeah. there, because that's the square footage so we can use. So it's going to be on the boardwalk. It's going to be partially on the beach and partially on the boardwalk. Oh. Do you have any idea how big the facility is going to be? I think the portion on the beach has to remain the same as the original Capra Pit uh, compliance, the portion of the beach okay. is going to be 800 so, square feet. How much the rest of it is going to be, I don't know, because it's also adding more restrooms, which I think everybody, probably everybody except one in this room would say that we need as far as uh, our beachfront. So the restrooms are going to be for the public, I would say. Correct. Okay. And we're hoping to keep them open year round. Okay. The restrooms are going to be for the public, and then they're going to have a um, emergency medical little section. That's very the small, yes. In case something happens, you can just roll mm -hmm. them out and maybe roll them out, God forbid. Okay. Um, and then we're going to get rid of that trailer on Second Avenue and have three stations where you can sell tickets out of and okay. get rid of that little shack also. The other thing <coughs> is, it says it's going to. The fees are going to include architectural, engineering, and design work surveying, which could be costly because it's the beach, which we know. Construction plan. Is this going to have to go before the planning board or anything? I do not believe so. You just know? Uh, Michael's. To, whatever TNM comes up with, if the council approves it, that's it. To the best of my knowledge, yes, Louise. Thank you. Thank you. Motion to close. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Do I have a motion to adopt 2019-42? Second. 
Move it. Second. Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Do I have a motion for adjournment? Move it out. Second. All in favor? All right.